My talk is called uh, Microtonal Scale Design in the DAW. So first I'll give you some history about myself and, and context about um, what motivates and inspires me to uh, make advances in microtonality. Uh, and I'll share with you some, um, uh, uh, some recent advances, fairly recent, uh, that have really, really reduced the friction of using microtonality to tune up multiple software synthesizers in a DAW, which is a very, very exciting long time coming uh, sort of advancement. And then finally, wish me luck, I'm gonna try and do some musical demos. I'm not gonna play you beautiful like songs or anything, but I'm gonna show you some really novel uh, microtonal scale designs that maybe you haven't seen, and I hope it blows your mind. <laughs> so a little bit about me. Um, my first career was a 3D computer graphics artist at Disney. I worked on many animated features, such as Lion King, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Hercules, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I was a software engineer that basically made art. And uh, every film, uh, I'd have an R&D budget, and it was my job to come up with a unique look for a film that made it different from other films. So I worked very closely with art directors. Art directors uh, typically are background painters. And the very first thing I noticed working with them is almost every one of these uh, folks had some kind of book about uh, color theory and how to you know, make palettes, visual palettes. And, um, uh, I've always been a musician, always been making music, and it kind of struck me like, how, how come I don't have something like that? I just got these black and white keys and a keyboard, and uh, you know, these guys are just, that's what they do all day long. Uh, and so they would map out the emotional arcs of films. Uh, so, you know, music are like, Disney is like a hero journey, right? So maybe in the beginning it's happy, and so there's like a beautiful blue and yellow and green, and, and they would just paint just lines with colors, and uh, those were cues for everyone on the team to understand, like, this is the emotion that we're going for in this moment. Uh, and then maybe, as you go through the story, maybe something traumatic happens, and it, there's, there's a fight, and it's anger, there's a lot of red, 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 red. Uh, and so I became very sensitive to um, just, you know, color, but also just the, the idea of, I'm gonna take you on an emotional journey. And as I was making music at night, um, you know, these kind of two things kind of became conflated. Uh, so it's very important when you're making an animated feature and, of course, many software projects that, uh, you know, you, you do, do things with intention and these things need to be reproducible and they need to be editable. So if I capture a, an amazing performance, I need to be able to edit it. And if I want to change my mind a year later, I need to become, be able to come back, bring it back up, tweak it, and re-render it. So that was also kind of baked into my DNA. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I like working in DAWs like so much. So when I make music, my creative process is in a DAW, as opposed to say, uh, like the iOS ecosystem where it's very performance-based, but you don't have quite the professional DAWs that you have on a desktop. Uh, I'm just gonna keep going. So what is microtonality? So um, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna have two slides on this. I'm gonna come at it a couple different ways. So uh, Johnny Reinhardt is the director of Microtonal University, which is a branch of American Festival of Microtonal Music. This is his definition. He says all music is microtonal music cross-culturing. So you guys may not know this, but you're, you're all microtonalists. Uh, 12 tone equal temperament, which I'll just say 12 ET from now on, and you're all engineers, so I know you like acronyms, uh, is in itself a microtonal scale. Only it enjoys exorbitant attention and hegemonic power. Um, so we focus on the other tuning arrangements, and I highlighted the word arrangement because I'm going to get more into that. Um, and so uh, my definition of microtonality is you know, we, we design scales. Um, and, and the whole idea behind it is you're arranging pitches in a, some kind of sequence. And now, in the context of a DAW, that almost always comes down to 128 MIDI note numbers and mapping them to uh, frequencies. Uh, when you design scales, um, you trade off between melody and harmony. Scales, uh, there's very few scales that do both together. I think 12ET is one that does. Uh, but as you start designing other scales, you're like, eh, melody's good, where's my harmony, blah. And uh, the most important thing I want to say about uh, microtonality is I feel like when you play with these scales, I feel like your, your ears are hearing pitches, but what's really happening is your mind is reconstructing the, the geometry or the structure behind that scale design. And I think that's the magic of microtonality. Um, so that's, that's why I love it. And um, again, it's just, uh, just tying it back to the Disney experience. Uh, when I design scales, I, I, I use interactive tools and I'm literally pinpointing emotions in my brain, hopefully your brain as well. So I'm actually sitting there moving the needle and going, ah, that one, oh yeah, that. And I'm building a constellation or a palette of emotions. So um, that's my approach to uh, microtonality. <coughs> 
some more context before we start getting into the, the good stuff. Uh, Irv Wilson was a famous microtonalist. Um, he uh, was, well, his co colleagues described him as one of the most intuitive mathematicians. Uh, this guy would find musical uses for mathematical objects um, that you know had, had never been done before. And so basically using math to make art, you know, aesthetics. Um, he describes his designs as organic. Um, and so you'll see lots of uh, organic, like farming kind of uh, themes throughout uh, Wilsonic. And then also fractal, because many of his designs are self-similar and they're built recursively. Um, I have a link here, I'll show these slides later, um, that goes into detail about this conflation of uh, Disney, my time with Disney and time with Irv Wilson and how that uh, influenced me. Oh, I kind of jumped to this slide too fast. So I've been making microtonal music in a DAW, uh, I like Ableton Live, uh, since 1996. And let me tell you, it is freaking hard. And I think that's why um, there's just, there's not that much uh, microtonal music uh, or, or not enough musicians uh, have access to it uh, up until relatively recently. So um, incredible friction, just really huge barriers to entry. So most software synthesizers didn't respect the MIDI tuning standard. Most software synthesizers don't. Uh, take Scala files, which is like an old ubiquitous uh, tuning uh, file format. And even those that do, if you're a composer and you have to, and you got 20 software synthesizers and you want to change the scale, you got to sit there and change it. And, uh, and none of that could be automated. It's just, it's just awful. Um, Odd Sound uh, released a technology called MTS ESP. And this completely lowers the, the, the floor. It's, it's amazing. Um, I can't read that number, it's so big, but <laughs> um, Richard James of Aphex Twin was a big supporter of the, the project, and uh, you know, you've got 63 billion or whatever, some, the, the biggest double <laughs> that you have more frequencies to, to play with. Uh, so, um, and that's exciting. Uh, so, how does this work? So, MTS ESP is a, actually a shared library, and uh, plugins in, in the DAW uh, load the DAW library dynamically. One plugin gets to be the master, registers as the master, and Wilsonic is a master. Uh, and it, it is responsible for owning the global tuning state. Uh, so it owns the tuning table, the 128 MIDI note numbers to frequency mapping. The other plugins, if they support MTS ESP, they register as clients. And so they just uh, you know, pull the master for, hey, what I'm playing this note. What, what should this frequency be? Super lightweight API, very easy to integrate. Um, very low risk uh, if, if your soft synth supports MTS ESP and you're a client and there is no master, nothing bad happens. You fall back on 12 ET, so it's all good. Um, there is no MIDI uh, communication that's not necessary and there's no special routing in the DAW. So again, just you just put them in there and it just works. So this is a you know just a screen grab of their website of the software synthesizers that natively support MTS ESP. Like I said, it's a very lightweight integration. I'm begging you all to put it into your synthesizers. Please let's grow this list. Um, but if you if you don't natively support MTS ESP, but you support MPE, um, that works too, because Odd Sound provides uh, a, a client that reads from the master and outputs polyphonic pitch bin. So you can put it on a track as a uh, MIDI effect. Um, and there's some free options as well. So again, I'm begging you, put it in your software sense. So microtonality is more accessible than ever. There's a lot of free solutions. Uh, so you, know, you got to pay for the laptop, maybe uh, MIDI interfaces. But there's a lot of free software synthesizers that support it. And there's free DAWs. So um, it doesn't have to be expensive anymore. All right. <clears throat> So um, this is Wilsonic, it's free, it uh, works on Mac and Windows, it's still in beta, I'm just getting it up to par with the iOS version. Um, all of the parameters are automatable in the DAW, and this is a big deal, because most of these scale designs that I'm talking about, um, the, the design itself has parameters that changes the nature of what you hear. And to be able to um, automate that in the DAW means you can you know, reproduce and edit your performances. Um, so, and then also you'll notice uh, when I get to the demos, uh, there'll be a microtonal keyboard at the bottom. It displays metadata. Each pitch displays metadata on how that note was actually created. Um, the keys are colored by pitch. Again, hearkening back to uh, those art director, you know, abstract color scripts. And then the other thing that's really cool is uh, in real time, uh, this is very lightweight computation. Um, 
um, no matter what scale is being played, I can analyze it for certain types of aesthetics. So for example, in mathematics, there's uh, arithmetic, arithmetic means, harmonic means, geometric means. These, are, these uh, aesthetics, uh, a lot of people have looked at visually, but they actually work for music as well. And so in real time, we'll actually go in and go, ah, here's a, here's a triad, here's another one. And you'll see that on the keyboard in uh, the demos. Okay, so I'm gonna start you off easy. Um, so the very first couple, I'm just gonna show you Wilson's Garden, so it's a curated list. If you're not into scale design, you don't want to make your own scales, but you're interested in just tuning up all your sense to a cool scale, like the, the, these first two are for you. And then Scala file support, that's a legacy tuning a format, so it's very important to support that. And then um, once we get past that, I, I might lose some of you, I don't know. <laughs> I hope you find it as awesome as I do, but we'll see. So I'm going to show you three amazing scale designs. I only got seven minutes left, so I'm going to get to it. All right, so curated scales. Um, so Irv Wilson, um, a lot of folks spent a lot of time with him. I spent a lot of time with these folks, Craig Grady, Stephen James Taylor, Jose, Gary John, blah. So we've all contributed to this huge uh, uh, library of curated scales. Um, and so I will show you what that sounds like. Time to wake up. <laughs> Someone knew that I was gonna <laughs> geek out at this point. Okay, so this is Wilson's Garden. This is Wilsonic. I, it's in Logic. Uh, I'm a live guy. Uh, my computer died. Thank you, Ari, for loaning me your, your laptop. Uh, these are all the scale designs. Uh, in Wilson's Garden, there's uh, a whole lot of presets. Some people tell me I put too many in there, but I think they're, I love them. And so I will, I'll start you guys off with some archetypes. So, um, so uh, the harmonic series, harmonic series occurs in nature. Any kind of string uh, resonates with uh, modes of harmonics. Um, and uh, also air in a cavity that's resonating, like a flute, something like that. So uh, harmonics are kind of, I, I think we co-evolved with them. Uh, so they're very, yeah, yeah. okay. So if this was, so this is, uh, I know the number says two, uh, but it's, uh, the, the second and third harmonics, and that kind of sounds like a, you know, brr, you know, that, that's a fifth. Um, if you invert that, this is called the undertone series, uh, it sounds like this. Uh, it's like a fourth, right? Now, but we can keep going. So as we go further and further down the harmonic series, oh, well, this is combining them, but here. So th now we're going to go to a mode where there's uh, three harmonics, so. Major triad. Um, this is uh, the inverse of that, and it is really fun. Here, I don't need that um, to hop back and forth, right? This is, uh, oops. Oh, logic. Okay, sorry, I can't show you because logic won't let me uh, use my keys the way I want. So let's just keep going. This is uh, a tetrad. So this is uh, the fourth mode of harmonics, and this is the inverse. So that doesn't sound weird to me. That sounds freaking gorgeous. Uh, now, these, these keep going. You can combine them. You can do any kind of order. I'll go to the pentad, and I'll stop and move on, because I only have five minutes left. So uh, this is the pentad. So yeah, it's starting to get a little more complex. It's getting you know, further and further away from those very simple things that we've heard. 12ET actually does a pretty good job doing uh, those first, uh, you know, the, all the way up to the tetrad. So um, that's one of the reasons why it just works. Um, okay, so anyways, if you just want to explore, I got you. Uh, the other thing I'll show you is Scala files. Um, Scala files, uh, there's a massive online archive. I bundled it for you. Here's 5,000 Scala files right here for you. <laughs> yes, and this is automatable in the DAW too. So you can say, ooh, I like uh, scale number 1,800. Uh, and and that could, that's actually you know an automatable parameter. So you could actually have scale progressions in your song. And again, hearkening back to Disney art director, like color scripts, emotional arcs of a story, that, you know, you could build up some really cool, you know, you could take people places. Um, okay, now we're gonna get into the good stuff. I only have four minutes, I should have, I knew it was ambitious. Okay, so moments of symmetry, uh, this is uh, Irv's um, he calls them nested two interval patterns. Um, I'm actually going to show you really quickly how 12VT is built. Um, 
if you ever wondered, like, how did we, how do we get 12 tone equal temperament? Like, why did it, why is it a thing? So, oh, I didn't save it. Um, bear with me, folks. It's going to be so worth it. Okay. So the way this works is I'm going to start with uh, the octave. I'm going to start with a fundamental, and I'm going to go to the second harmonic of the octave. So, so um, th that's my, my period, uh, or you know, that, that's the interval of which I'm going to uh, start subdividing. If we subdivide it by a fifth, which is actually the third harmonic, you get this. Sounds familiar, right? Um, now here's the thing. Um, I'm going to keep going. Uh, so I, I took the number one and I multiplied it by three. Now I'm going to take that three and multiply it by three, and I'm going to keep doing that. And that geometry is a chain, right? So, so that structure that you're hearing is actually a chain of, of an interval. Uh, so this is uh, what it sounds like. Whoops. With two. That should sound kind of familiar too, because you kind of heard that before. So now I'm going to go out again. Uh, and this time, you notice we're jumping to five notes per octave. Well, what happened? If we jumped to four, we would have two interval sizes. We'd have, uh, we'd have I'm sorry, three interval sizes. It wouldn't be a, a nested two interval pattern. It would be a three interval pattern. Listen to this now. That should sound pretty familiar, right? That's a pentatonic scale. A lot of uh, ancient cultures learned that one. Let's hop up again to the next level. This is seven. So that's a diatonic scale, and so forth. And then we get to 12, and, and 12 has all of that inside it. Uh, so that's how 12-tone uh, equal temperament came to be. I got one minute. <laughs> OK. There's no way I'm going to be able to cover these. Uh, I, guess, I guess the last thing I'll, I, I, I think I'm out of time to actually uh, do this any justice. I usually do this talk, and it usually takes an hour, so I knew I was, I was really stretching it. But, um, but anyways, I guess think, I think I guess I'll just close on. Irv Wilson um, tied a lot of mathematical objects to, to music. So I just showed you a chain. Um, he also tied Pascal's triangle to, uh, uh, to, so this is the sixth row of Pascal's triangle. Uh, you may have, you know, when I was in school, they just said, oh, you, you do combinatorics with it, and you do binomial coefficients, and that's it. But actually, you can drill into this structure. This is a 20-note uh, scale, but inside it, this, this structure was built by the rows that came before it. So it's like an additive construct. So inside that 20-note scale are actually six 10-note scales and six 10-other note scales. And all of those scales are subsets of that 20 notes. And they all have their own structure. What does that sound like? So I'm just spamming the keyboard for now. But check this out. That's row five of Pascal's triangle. As you keep going, whoa, too far. Too far. Sorry, I'm not used to these, these keys. OK. As you drill into that 10-note scale, guess what's inside it? All the things in row four. So you have all these six-note scales and four-note scales. As you drill into the six-note scales, all the structures from row three are inside it. So it's this incredibly like symmetric, uh, beautiful space of harmonics. So sorry, that's uh, the best I can do in the time that I have. I have lots of demos online that I'll, I, I can share with you as well if you want to get into a little more detail and hear more musical examples. So, And with that, I'll just say thank you. And uh, I'm looking for that Cambrian explosion of microtonal music. Let's go.